Bottom composition is one of the most overlooked factors in offshore bass fishing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pop out hard bottom areas on your side imaging view to find sweet spots that are overlooked by a lot of anglers offshore. Let's get into it. Today I'm on a small lake in Arkansas. The water temps are in the low to mid 60s and it's the middle of April so the bass should be spawning any day now. However, fluctuating water levels have postponed the spawn and a lot of bass are still setting up a little bit outside of the spawning areas in their pre-spawn locations. I started the day by graphing some offshore grass lines to see if I could find some fish setting up in either some offshore brush piles or on the edge of some deeper grass in 8 to 12 feet of water. After graphing for about 10 minutes, I saw something interesting on my side imaging view. If you take a look at this image, you can see that there's a grass line on the left side of the screen, a bright spot which is hard bottom in the middle of the screen, and also a lay down with some brush just to the right of that hard spot. Yeah, look at those fish right there. You can see them down there in the grass. I'm gonna fire over there. That's that grass edge that I showed earlier on the side view, the rocky spots just over here to the left, and then that grass edge is there. And they're up in that grass edge, which makes sense given the conditions. I might even pick up a bait like a jerk bait or something and work it down the edge of that grass. Oh, there's one. Got him. That feels like a good one too. First spot pulled up here. I'm gonna spot lock us. Oh my gosh, that feels like a good one. I mean, graft it first before we started fishing it, pulled up here, and yeah, that's a freaking good one, dude. That's awesome. Get up here, fish. Oh, there we go. Look at that right there. I mean, guys, there's people all over the banks out here. They are trying to fish for those spawners. I just come out here, throw a little worm out deeper, graft for 10 minutes, and just start catching three and a half pounders. I mean, what else is there to do? Beautiful fish right there. Got him on the little Neko rig with a Berkeley, uh, I think it's a Magnum hit worm. Three pounds, seven ounces. I mean, three pound, three and a half pounder right there. Beautiful fish. Let's get him back down in the lake. Here we go, guys. I mean, we've been out here for 10 minutes and already have a three and a half pounder in the boat. That's what I'm talking about. I am going to re-rig this little Neko rig. You may be wondering why I'm fishing a Neko rig instead of, let's say, a jerk bait or something in these conditions. And what I found is that a little wacky rig worm like this with that nail weight is a great way to cover water around grass and even in some of these offshore areas because you can swim the worm and it has that nice pulsing action. But you also stop it and if you're not sure exactly what mood the fish are in, it's good to give yourself that option to fish slow or fast. And I just love it this time of year, especially when the fish are in that like pre-spawn to post-spawn stage. So it worked right there and we're going to keep it rolling because I think I can catch a few more fish off this spot. If you showed this image to a hundred bass fishermen and asked them which element in this image is the most important for holding bass, I would expect that the majority of the anglers would either talk about the outside grass line or the brush. However, in this case, the hard bottom area is actually more important than both of those because the hard bottom is what's going to attract the forage. That's going to be crawfish, bluegill, and shad. Without a consistent food source, you're not going to have bass setting up on a particular spot in large numbers. Therefore, the hard bottom area here is actually the most important factor in this entire image. One thing that's also important to note is that you're not going to see this hard bottom area unless you have the settings in your fish finder tuned properly. Whenever I'm setting up the side imaging view on any fish finder, regardless of brand, my main objective is to make sure that these hard bottom areas pop off the screen at a glance. The reason that you can actually make this happen on a fish finder is because hard bottom areas are going to have a stronger return than softer bottom areas. By reducing the sensitivity in your side imaging view, the softer bottom areas will appear darker on your screen, and the harder bottom areas will still have a relatively bright return. Now, there is a sweet spot with this. If you take the sensitivity down too low, everything will have too low of a return, and even those harder bottom areas will look dark on the screen. 
Therefore, you need to set the sensitivity in that perfect range where the harder bottom areas are still bright on the screen and those softer bottom areas are darker. The best way to dial this in is to go to a lake in your area with a soft mud bottom. Launch your boat and then graph right in front of the boat ramp. The goal is to see the boat ramp in your side imaging view and as long as there's mud bottom in that general area, you should be able to see the boat ramp as a brighter return because it's made of cement or concrete and the area around the boat ramp should be more of a mud or silt bottom. Keep dialing in that sensitivity and contrast until that boat ramp shines a little bit brighter than the surrounding bottom and you should be good to go. Now one call out is that with these settings, your brush piles and rock piles are not going to look as picture perfect as they will in like the marketing screenshots you see online. You're not going to get as much target separation and it may be slightly more difficult to identify softer bottom objects like brush and twigs. You'll still be able to see them, they just won't look as great. But honestly, that's a small sacrifice to make in my opinion to identify these hard bottom spots very easily. Most of the best offshore areas that I find have a combination of good cover like brush or grass with that hard bottom around them. That's what's holding the fish and that's what you need to be looking for on these offshore areas. Now I know I didn't go into specific settings for any brand of fish finder and that's because the settings are completely different depending on the model of fish finder you have, the type of transducer you have, all that sort of stuff. So if you are interested in knowing which settings I use specifically on different brands of fish finders, head over to fishthemoment.com and check out my sonar settings guides. I have created guides to set the settings on all of the units that I've used on my boat over the years. I have several different brands and I'm adding more as I get new fish finders on my boat year after year. So definitely check out these fish to moment sonar settings guides if you want to make sure you're using the proper settings, the ones that I use at least, on the lake so you can find more offshore bass this year. After catching a few more small fish off this first spot, I moved over to another area that I graphed earlier in the day with the exact same combination of cover and structure. We have a nice hard spot here that actually drops off into a ditch or a little creek channel. There's an outside grass line that's hard to see, but it's definitely up there in the top left corner. We also have some offshore brush piles just outside of that hard spot. All of these factors lined up perfectly, so I decided to fish on that transition between the outside grass line and that harder spot on the edge of that ditch and immediately got to work. Got him. Little one. Oh, is this a better one? There we go, finally. A little bit better fish. There we go, got that fish a lot deeper. Man, getting the bites today has not been the problem. It's been catching fish that are this size, but finally getting out here just a little bit deeper and staying off that edge has produced another quality fish. I mean, it's not a big, big one, but it is a nice one right there. Nice fish right there, just a two and a half pounder, nothing crazy, but better than the little tiny dinks I've been catching. That might just be a male, but it definitely looks pre-spawn still. Very clean and healthy. We'll get this guy back down in the lake. After catching my second quality fish off a very similar structure cover combination, I knew I was dialing in a pattern. One thing that was interesting is that there were a lot of smaller bass setting up closer to that grass line in that six to eight foot range. I think these were all male bass that were getting ready to move up to start making beds. And honestly, I could just throw my little Neko rig up against the grass line and catch small fish all day long. However, the better quality fish were further out in front of those grass lines, right where the grass basically ended and those hard spots started. I wasn't getting nearly as many bites in these areas, but every bite I was getting was a quality fish. I would guess that my number of bites decreased in half or even by a factor of five by fishing these deeper areas, but I'm here to catch quality fish, so I kept going for those deeper areas as opposed to fishing those grass lines that were loaded with smaller fish. I only caught one quality fish off my second area, and I wanted to find one more spot that matched my pattern, so I moved across the lake and started graphing in that 10 to 15 foot zone. Fairly quickly, I found another hard bottom area with a brush pile by it next to an offshore grass line. All the factors lined up, and at this point, I was 
highly confident that I was going to be able to catch fish here, despite the fact that I wasn't necessarily seeing a ton of fish. In this image, you could actually see a handful of fish, which was different from the other two areas. A lot of times when I'm graphing offshore with side imaging, I'm not always just looking for fish. A lot of times you can get clues by seeing bait fish in the area, bottom composition, types of cover, things like that. You don't always need to see fish on the graph to commit to an offshore spot. The one piece of advice I would have though is to only fish a certain area for five to 10 minutes. If you don't get bit pretty quickly, just move on and keep trying new areas. Most of the time when you're fishing offshore, those bass are gonna bite within the first five to 10 casts on the spot. So graph good looking areas, find all the components you need, fish them and move on if it's not working until you find that right combination. Got him. There we go. Is that a good one? Can't tell. Don't want him getting down the brush regardless. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Nice. I mean guys, the pattern freaking works. It's not a giant, but it's another nice one. Better than the average quality that I was getting earlier. And man, another solid two and a half pound bass right there. You saw the whole process right there. That was pretty solid. No complaints on that at all. Got a beautiful fish in the boat with the Neko rig. Showed you how I graphed the spot. They were right where we talked about. Didn't actually see that fish at all. On the live scope, I just kind of threw up on that outside grass edge and he was there. Beautiful fish, nothing to complain about. There we go, another two pound, eight ounce bass. Nothing to complain about right there. On the Neko rig, you saw the whole process, saw the whole pattern. Beautiful fish, let's get back down the lake. There we go, guys. Got that fish on the exact same thing. That little Neko rig with the seven inch Berkeley power bait Magnum hit worm. You saw the whole process of me graphing this spot, pulling up. Once you dial in a pattern, it's pretty easy to consistently put these bear quality fish in the boat. I have had to drop my bites down though. I probably fished for 45 minutes without catching a single fish, even though I could just roll through here and catch them like crazy if I wanted to. So awesome day of fishing today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something about finding some of these in between fish. They're not pre-spawn, they're not spawning, and my whole process for dialing it in. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like down below. And other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video.